Hi, so today is a, is a video mainly on how to work end grain when you want to get a nice smooth finish. And here's a finish that we'll end up producing, which I think you'll agree is pretty good. So join me, I'll show you the different techniques you can use to prepare uh, an end grain surface. And also as a bonus, show you how to prepare card scrapers and a way of using them without burning your fingers. So I want to show you how I tackle cleaning up the end grain on something like this, uh, this oak. Uh, it's very hard, but it's also got quite a, a porous texture to it as well. I've cleaned up some of it, as you can see here, and I've got this half to finish off. Uh, this is actually just an offcut, so uh, we're not worried too much about it. Uh, but the leg it came from, I needed to smooth the bottom and bevel all the edges. So often when you've sawn a piece like this, uh, you might want to hit it with a plane. Uh, the obvious thing I guess would be a bench plane and sometimes the, the oak will accept it and you'll get shavings from it and you'll better clean it off. If you've got a nice sharp iron, finely set in the plane, you will get some shavings and it'll, it'll start to work, but often you'll find that it wants to jump across there and that ruins it. You end up with lots of divots, it's like a ploughed field. Uh, a low angle plane, like a low angle jack, you can end up with similar problems, um, but you'll, you'll notice this is very similar to a block plane setup. So you've got a blade bedded at a low angle and, and being called a block plane, people often think it's because uh, butcher's blocks were, were finished with these. Uh, they weren't really. Um, from time to time they'd be re-cleaned with these, but uh, most of the time they were done with a larger plane. But with the low angle plane, low angle bed, and uh, like a bit of 25 degree bevel on the iron, you can get reasonable shavings. And that will often work. It's worth just putting a bevel around the edges. That just affords a bit of bit of protection when the plane comes right the way through. Now of course the best way to do it is to plane simply about two thirds of the way across and then stop and then come back from the other side. That way you don't have any problems of, of breakout. But sometimes if your plane's not sharp and if you're having to push it a lot harder, um, it'll get away from you and go all the way across. So let's just take a few shavings here, putting a lot of weight down on the front of the plane because that's the only part that's registering before I take the cut. And you'll see we're getting shavings, reasonably thin, but it's cleaning up nicely. If you try and take a thick shaving in end grain, you're just going to end up with a mess. And you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm working in this direction, then I'm going to come back in this direction, and that helps to keep things nice and flat and we work across the whole surface. I'm showing probably this corner is a little bit low. Just continue to plane in towards the middle, coming from the different angles. As long as we shoot past the middle and not off the other edge, and we work all the way around, we should end up with it nice and flat. So that's a block plane method, usually works quite well. If you're having problems with that, you can go for um, a blade or with a bevel angle in here that's much higher, so perhaps a 50 degrees, and then it works more like a scraper. And that's what I've actually got set up in this jack plane. This is a 50 degree iron. And I can't go straight across here, it's struggling. But if I do it at an angle,
and that's very much scraping but I'm getting a really nice polished finish on there you'll see the shavings that come out of that are extremely thin and again we'd want to work from all the various sides and then we're getting that jumping again but that really is a scraping sound and although we're getting little thin shavings it's still doing a good job so you see we're getting there and we could continue with that but in the light whether it picks up on the camera I can see where the plane judders slightly you can see those marks which will come through in your polish when you finish your piece off so you don't want that other options you can do then are to scrape uh, you might reach for a scraper plane like a number 80 you can see how that is perhaps easier to use in this circumstance than the, the larger jack plane so that works very well if you don't have one of those you could use a method which is often referred to as a blunt chisel uh, you can also use a screwdriver with the end prepared nice and square so these front two edges are nice and sharp but at about 90 degrees so that edge if we get it right hold it at the right angle we can take and that's not dust that is actually shavings that are coming off there and that gives you a lovely polished finish you can make something a little bit bigger you can either use a like a one inch chisel something like that or just a piece of tool steel which is what I've got here with that edge prepared at 90 degrees and that's scraping tiny thin shavings off there making a lovely finish I encourage going all the way around the work like I did before and if you end up with any of those ridges from going in one direction it will get cleaned up as you work around to the other angle and of course you could use just a card scraper the problem you get with this is if you use it in what seems to be a common uh, way of using it these days is to hold it with fingers on the front and push in with thumbs at the back bending the, the scraper so you get a cutting point or deepest cutting point in the middle of the scraper and so if you keep working into the middle here what you'll end up with is uh, a hollow in the middle uh, if you use that method but you work right across the piece in lots of different strokes all overlapping and go all the way around like so uh, then you can get a virtually flat finish uh, which will have very tiny little plough marks through it I find the best way is to prepare the edge of the scraper nicely and then use it in the pulling motion to pull right the way across keeping it straight and again because we can't start off the edge we move all the way around working off the edges from every direction and I'm not taking shavings with this at the moment it's got uh, no burr turned on it it's simply a, a square edge on there and it's taking either minimal minimal shavings or more likely what you would just consider to be dust they are shavings rather than little saw, fine sawdust but they are extremely small and you do end up with a nicely polished surface now even if you don't have planes or scrapers around but you do have a chisel as long as it's nice and sharp if you work it in a skew motion across the surface you'll be able to take very fine 
shavings, just pairing like this, just taking off the high spots. Gradually working down. There's a tendency here that it might dig in and then you, you have to take even more material off to get it nice and flat. But in some instances, especially if you're working up into a corner, so if you've got to work up into a corner like that, you can't use a scraper because you just can't get into there. You obviously can't use a plane because that's going to hit the edges. Uh, you could use a blunt chisel or you can use the sharp chisel working at a skew just to work right up to the corners. Also with a nice sharp chisel you can use it as a scraper um, in a dragging motion, so drawing it back. Set it upright, tilt it slightly towards yourself and you just adjust that angle so you don't get it jumping across. So I'll show you a jump, so if, it, if it's almost upright and I put it towards me it's jerky, it jumps, and it's going to make indentations in the top rather than scraping it smooth. Uh, so if you tilt it forwards towards yourself a little bit, perhaps 5 degrees, 10 degrees, you'll see it'll scrape. Lovely little shavings, leaving quite a nice finish. Now another technique which I'd heard about for years but hadn't tried, uh, which I believe uh, floor finishers use, when they're trying to scrape a floor nice and flat, nice and smooth, that was to wet the surface. So one way of wetting it would be to use some, some meths. So just put a bit of meths on. And let that soak in. That's not going to affect your tools. Personally, I think the only thing it's doing is lubricating the tool to make it easier to move over the surface. But whatever, it, uh, it's an interesting idea and uh, worth trying out. You don't want to soak it too much, of course, and uh, you want to make sure you get rid of it at the end of the day. You can either flash it off if there's anything left, like so. Don't do it if you've got loads of spirit on there. And actually doing that just raises some of that roughness from between the, the annular rings there. So I think you've got to go back either with some fine sandpaper or just go over it quickly with the plane again. just to take those fluffs off. And it's interesting uh, to think that if that's raised some fluff at the end of the grain and you've then cleaned that off, you may actually be ending up with a, a nicer surface than just planing it flat in the first place because when you put your polish on you may just raise that fluff in your surface finish. So, flame off with some meths is perhaps something to do. I'm going to do this other side. Just to see whether it keep it consistent. So I'll flame that off. At the moment it feels lovely and smooth, but um, I flame that one off. Once that's all gone out, I can feel just a little fluffiness on there. So taking that off, so we're not taking any whole shavings here, nothing continuous, we're just taking that fluff off.
Now the piece that was sawn off here was the leg for a table and that got a nice chamfer around the outside so that's what I'm going to do on this one too. So I can show you the technique for that. It's to uh, just open the mouth up a bit on the plane and take a bit of a deeper cut. So what I've done is I've opened the mouth a little bit, I've extended the blade out a little bit more so it cuts a little bit deeper and now I'm going to angle the plane both to the wood in this direction but also skewing it and that means that the mouth is always uh, right across the edge so the plane won't dig in. If I try to plane this way the whole of the blade suddenly hits that edge in one go and that's a bit of a problem. If we start coming this way and skew it we get more of a slicing action and it's a much nicer cut Again, I'm not going past the end in case I tear that edge out. So I'll come back from this direction. Same down here. Simple as that. So let's get some finish on and show you what it looks like. So how do we prepare a scraper in the first place? Well if you don't have one, you want to make one, uh, you can use an old saw blade just snip out a piece from the saw blade, anything from about four, to four inches to six inches long by about two to three inches wide. Perfectly okay to do that. Once you've got your blank or if you purchase a new scraper, it's important to make sure that the edges are at 90 degrees to the faces. At least it is if you want to get a burr on both sides and you can use a scraper in one direction and then you can flip it around and you can use the burr that's on the other side as well which gets you twice as much out of a single sharpening. So to prepare it at 90 degrees uh, you want a file. You can either do this in a vise so stick your card in a vise and work the file along the edge like so. Use your fingers to make sure you keep the file at 90 degrees You can put it towards you if you find that easier. Or, and here's an alternative method, when I'm jointing saws I use a file clamped into a jig to hold it at 90 degrees and you can do the same and use it with a card scraper. So this block of wood got a slit in it, it pinches onto a file and then I can run the card against the block of wood, against the file and that prepares it at 90 degrees as well. So two different methods there. You could also use that with it in the vise if you needed to. But from the point of view of ease, just a file with fingers You should better see and also hear when you've got it a continuous flat surface and you should better feel a rough burr on either side all the way along when you've gone to the full width of the edge. And I'm almost there. For the last few strokes if you bring the file so it contacts the whole edge just make sure it's nice and straight as well. Now you want to take those edges off 
There are a couple of ways to do that. The traditional way is to use a slip stone, like so, a little bit of oil on it. And be careful of your fingers when you're doing this because those burrs are very sharp. Make sure you don't contact them with your fingers. And you'll find that disappears. Top surface that's come from the file can be a little bit rough. So you can draw that slip stone along the edge, making sure you keep it at 90 degrees again. Just to polish. Finish with the sides again just to make sure there are no burrs. So, with that edge all nicely prepared, we now need to create a burr on there and turn it so it's uh, ready for scraping. And what we do, we traditionally use a burnisher. This one is uh, from Germany by Kirschen, it's a hardened steel rod, tool steel rod. It should be harder than the um, scraper, card scraper. But card scrapers today are being sold that are much harder than burnishers. And so what happens is your burnisher, which should be lovely and smooth, ends up getting scratches on it. And you can probably hear I'm getting scratches on there. Um, what I do quite regularly is then chuck this up in my lathe and use very fine sandpaper just to polish this back to a nice smooth surface. It's important because if you have bad irregularities on the burnisher uh, that will impart problems with the burr and the burr will be a little bit rough and then that roughness will be shown up in the work that you're doing with it. So remember that. You can get carbide ones these days which are, are lovely and hard and so that's probably the route to go down. So we take our lovely polished edge, and I forget which one it was now, this one here I think, put it up to the edge of the bench, I just overlap it very slightly from the bench, and then I use the burnisher with a lot of downward pressure, about four strokes in each direction. Now remember we're doing this on both sides, so we'll flip it over, four strokes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should deform the edges of that edge. And now they should be pointing uh, in the same plane as the card itself, and that won't cut very well. So what we now need to do is turn those edges over so that they're at an angle to the card. Now you could do this just holding it vertically or you can do it in the vise. We line the burnisher up on the edge. Now that's at 90 degrees. If you're seeing it that way, what I'm going to do is tilt it between 5 and 10 degrees to do this one edge and then 5 and 10 degrees the other side of 90 to do the other edge. And I'm just going to do it holding it vertically up on the bench. So one, two, three, four, five strokes, something like that. It depends how hard you're working it, and you can feel that there's a burr now on that edge. Tilting it the other way. Just check that burr with your fingertip. I'm just slightly low here, so finish that off. There we go. You will better feel that quite evidently and you better feel it with or make a noise with your fingertips on there. It just catches on the edge of that burr. So that's the burnisher on at 90 degrees to the card. We tilt it this one way. If 
few strokes, tilt it the other way. And we've raised the burr on both sides. Now we should find we should better scrape nice shavings. either on that side or we flip it around this way on the other side as well when you get to the end you're much better off pulling off rather than pushing off so if I'm coming this way pull off and feather back and then for this end over here pull off and feather back for a nice finish. Now you might find on something narrow that you get a bit of tilt like that which is not so great so you might want to extend the area that you're scraping by beveling the cutter, skewing the cutter and scraping like so. That works just as well. Don't forget you can apply greater pressure as you go along so you can start with virtually nothing happening at this end and just feather it in. Now one of the problems with card scrapers um, apart from the fact that if you bend them you end up with divots that you don't really want uh, it's best to use them flat but it's hard to hold on to them and work them properly uh, with hands that are a little bit arthritic like mine. And also if you're working a card scraper for very long you'll find they get very hot and you can burn yourself on them. So something I've developed is a technique where I use a hand screw and um, clamp it in like so. It makes for a very comfortable way of holding the scraper. There's an obvious way of gripping around here, get a lot of purchase on there and you can put as much pressure and as much tilt on the scraper as you want from the other end. You're not going to burn yourself. And it works perfectly. So I definitely encourage anyone that has problems using their hands for car scrapers to, to get hold of a small or relatively small hand screw like this. Obviously you can use large ones as well but the dimensions on this just work really well for, for hands my sort of size. Now it hasn't been my intention to put you off power sanding or using sandpaper at all but um, I did think it would be nice to show you that you don't need to do that to create what I think you'd have to agree was a you know, really good finish which we did uh, using a lot of mixed techniques on this. We didn't just use one technique and I would certainly suggest that you always finish with, with one technique. Uh, but we've, we've ended up with a lovely finish on there. Um, just through some simple techniques using scraping or using low angle irons. Or even using uh, a scraping iron, so a 50 degree bevel in a, in a low angle plane. Uh, so all those different techniques, all different ways you can get excellent finishes on end grain. And as a little bonus I showed you how you could use... Um, card scrapers without burning your hands and also how to prepare them for use. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please um, like, subscribe and share this video and I hope to see you again soon. Cheerio.